Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X Research and Professional Physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Planet X, Escape Velocity and Gravity. Now on February 25th, 2007, the 2007 stellar core traversed the sun inside the sun's corona. As detailed in article 143, entitled Planet X Traverses the Sun, Irrefutable Evidence. Now the object can be seen traversing the sun in figure one, as we can see here. There it is, about to traverse, and there it goes, keeps on going, and there it leaves. Now the fact that this object was inside the sun's corona as it traversed the sun is evidenced by the light emitted by the sun's corona being seen between the object and the detector as shown. Well, we can see it in these figures. We can see that um, the object looks red, not black, although it looks black here at the edge before it enters the corona. And we can see that there is uh, light being emitted by the corona on the back side that is between the object and the detector, which means that there is corona between the object and the detector. And uh, we can see it here again as the object enters the corona. We can see that the left side is still black. And we can see that the object is a little in front of the surface of the sun because there is corona behind it. Um, so it's slightly in front, it takes a little longer to enter the corona where it is. But there is definitely corona here in front of the object or on the right hand side. So the object is definitely en entering uh, the sun's corona and therefore is very very close to the sun. The object uh, was um, about 2.2 times the size of Jupiter and it took 10 hours to traverse the Sun so we could calculate its speed to be 39 kilometers per second or 24 miles per second. Now this speed seems initially to be quite fast but it, it is in fact very slow. It's much less than the Sun's escape velocity which means that it violated gravitational law. Now, escape velocity is the velocity that an object must have at the surface of a celestial body in order to escape its gravitational attraction. If the object has an initial velocity which is less than the escape velocity for the celestial body it is being launched from, then it will either fall back toward the object or it will go into orbit around it. Thus an object which starts from the surface of a celestial body of mass m and radius r must have an initial velocity v which is, allows it to get infinitely far away from the celestial object. In other words, it needs to have enough kinetic energy to overcome the potential energy resulting from the gravitational attraction of the celestial body. And this gravitational potential energy at the surface is given by U equals minus gm, little m over r. Little m is the mass of the object that's being launched, capital M is the mass of the celestial body, r is the radius of that body, v is that initial velocity uh, which will use in the kinetic energy. The negative means uh, that this is an attractive interaction and therefore this gravitational um, potential energy has to be overcome by the object's kinetic energy. And in solving uh, the energy equation we uh, derive the velocity, the escape velocity v, which the object must have. And in the case of the Sun it turns out to be 616 kilometers per second using these values, the standard value for the gravitational constant, the mass from the for the Sun, which is 1.98 times 10 to the 30 kilograms, and R, the radius of the Sun, which is 6.957 times 10 to the 8 meters. Meters is, of course, the S, the correct SI unit to use here. Now, um, the 27th 
2007 stellar core was not quite on the sun's surface, but it was inside the inner corona of the sun, which is very close to the surface. The sun's inner corona goes out to a distance of about half the sun's radius, so the new minimum escape velocity, uh, which takes this into consideration, would be V I C in a corona. So that would be at the edge of the inner corona where instead of R we use 1.5 R. So we added another 0.5 R to the distance. And then the new escape velocity is 503 kilometers per second. It is still way above what uh, the speed of the stellar core was at 39 kilometers per second. It was obviously moving way too slowly to escape the sun's gravitational attraction. So it should therefore have collided with the sun and remained there, but it did not. It just went past the sun without being perturbed in the least. This means that the sun's gravity had no effect on it, basically. This suggests that gravity is not what we have been led to believe it is until now. And further evidence that the stellar cores do not interact gravitationally with the sun. It was not just the 2007 stellar core that did not feel the sun's expected gravitational attraction. The Sun also did not feel the gravitational attraction of the stellar core. The 2007 stellar core had a radius which was 2.2 times larger than Jupiter, um, and the Sun's core is about twice the size of Jupiter. So, since the, the core should be the densest part and therefore the most massive part of a star, we basically have two stars of approximately the same mass, interacting with each other as if both had a lot less mass. Now setting the speed of the 2000 stellar core is the sun's effective escape velocity. In other words, we let the sun's um, effective uh, um, escape velocity to be 39 kilometers per second. We can find the sun's effective mass. In other words, we can find the mass the sun seems to have as far as the 2000 stellar core uh, is concerned during its traversing journey. And that would mean that the effective mass of the sun is the effective escape velocity of the sun, which is 39, divided by the velocity, the escape velocity from the edge of the inner core, the outer edge, times the mass of the sun. This would be 39 over 503 squared times, so that's 0 0.006, which means that the mass of the sun would only be 0.6% of what it has been attributed to it, according to our accepted gravitational law. Now, um, this means that the sun would have would have an effective mass of 1.19 times 10 to the 8 kilograms, which is 6.3 times the mass of Jupiter. Now, um, that seems larger than Jupiter, but don't forget the sun is supposed to be a thousand times more massive than Jupiter. And according to that stellar core, there was only, and this is the maximum uh, effective mass. Um, According to that stellar core, the Sun had a mass which must have been less than 6.3 times the mass of Jupiter. So, mass is usually defined as a measure of amount of matter, in which case the two stars do not seem to generate gravitational fields that are directly dependent on the amount of matter they have, as would be expected from accepted gravitational theory. The fact that these massive objects, stars, have entered the solar system without disrupting the orbits of its planets, also indicates that their gravitational attraction on the solar system planets is not according to what the accepted gravitational model would have us believe. In conclusion, the 2007 stellar core did not interact with the Sun according to accepted gravitational law. The observed gravitational interaction suggests a maximum effective mass for the Sun equivalent to 6.3 times the mass of Jupiter, which is only 0.6% of the Sun's current accepted mass. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.